back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Jody, and I primarily film climbing and book content and sometimes vlogs. This is just my hobby channel. I'm excited to film my first book review of all the books I've read in March. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I'm by no means a writer or literary critic. I'm just a book enthusiast. So just take that with a grain of salt. I just think it would be really interesting to kind of see what past me felt about some of these novels if I choose to return to them in the future. So with that, I will get started on my March book reviews. I read a total of five books this month, three of which I have the physical copies right now. I actually lent two of them, one to my mom while she's traveling and one to my friend Christine. So I only have three physically, but I'll talk through all five. Did I just eat lunch and procrastinate on recording the rest of this? Maybe, but I'm back now and I'm gonna talk about the first book that I read this month, which is Alone With You in the Ether by Olivia Blake. Isn't this cover so beautiful? It, it's so beautiful. This book had me like, I think because I've been reading a lot of contemporary fiction romance novels that are more on the entertainment comedy side i wasn't prepared for the emotional turmoil that i was about to feel with this book in a good way it just left me with so much to think about and feel and just cope with in all seriousness this was a really lovely and well composed novel it follows two two characters Aldo and Regan. Aldo is a doctoral student studying theoretical mathematics and Regan is a artist who gives out tours at the Art Institute of Chicago. This is actually where their paths cross. They both are kind of intrigued with each other based on their first conversation and so they decide to embark on six more conversations to see if they should become friends. Without spoiling too much of the story, you just follow the journey of the growing relationship between Aldo and Regan. They're both flawed, broken individuals, and you really get to see the turmoil within themselves and how it impacts their relationship. If you're looking for more serious romance novel, I definitely recommend Alone With You in the Ether. It contains more heavier themes regarding like mental disorders. The romance is definitely more intimate and vulnerable. And if you just want to be left with all the feelings, definitely read this book. <laughs> the second book I read this month was If We Were Villains by M.L. Rio. I don't know why I chose this particular book. I think it was because I read the the description and it was very intriguing to me. I'm also trying to expand the genres that I do read. I tend to lean towards like fantasy and romance. I do want to read other genres, experience different writing styles, writing, and storylines. So I did dive into this subgenre genre of dark academia. But this novel is also categorized as a thriller, mystery thriller, and I do really like thriller movies, so I wanted to try like a thriller mystery novel. Basically, the novel follows seven theater students. They go to a very elite art school. They're actors primarily focusing on Shakespeare plays. There's a lot of Shakespeare references and just full lines of Shakespeare in the novel, which I think was cool because I read a little bit of Shakespeare in high school. I mean, it was required like I think The Tempest and Macbeth, it did foreshadow a little bit to the the plot of the story. Like the actor playing Julius Caesar, you can obviously assume that he might be the one that gets stabbed in the back. Hopefully that doesn't spoil too much because it's kind of obvious while you're reading it. That also added kind of a predictability element to it because I know what happens in those plays 
I think what compelled me to continue reading it is why did Oliver, the main character, turn himself in? What is the real story behind the murder and the cover-up? And so it's just a fun, twisty, dark, dark mystery thriller novel that I really enjoyed. I was entertained. I was thoroughly entertained. And since it was my first dark academia novel, I didn't know what to really expect out of the genre. And after reading it, I was still confused. So I did Google what dark academia entailed and it shed more light to the subgenre slash genre after I read Babel actually, because I could see some parallels between if we were villains and Babel. Okay, so um, that last video would have been a great segue to the third book I read this month, which is Babel, but I got distracted and then completely did not feel like recording the other three book reviews. So hence, it is Sunday now and I'm here hoping that I finish this book review video. I'm also going to hype myself up with some bubble tea. I just ate lunch and um, I'm about to have a food coma and I just really got to get through this. Yum. All right, okay. So third book I read this month was Babel. The full title of Babel is actually Babel or the Necessity of Violence in Arcane History of the Oxford Translators Revolution. That's a heckin' long title, so I'm just gonna call it Babel. Babel is the novel that I was reading in my previous reading vlog, and I did give it a 10 out of 10 rating. I really enjoyed it. I didn't really give much detail as to why I gave it a 10 out of 10 rating in the previous vlog, but hopefully I'll explain myself more here. I also mentioned how it was a good blend of historical fiction and fantasy, but I want to update my uh, note that it's actually more focused on historical fiction rather than fantasy. So it's not really half and half, it's more historical fiction. I was split on this book. I knew a part of me would really like it because of what it would be about in terms of like translation, the meaning of words, but then the other part of me was a little skeptical on whether I would like the historical placement of the novel. I think it, take, it takes place in the 1830s in Britain. The book criticizes a lot of British colonialism and imperialism, so I was unsure how I would feel about those topics, but I'm really glad that I am kind of ex going outside my comfort zone to read about these topics because they are a part of our history and know that these things have happened and why our society is the way it is or why yeah okay a little bit about Babel so Babel follows a orphan named Robin Swift and he's taken after his family passes from a disease from Canton, China by a man named Professor Lovell. He's brought to Britain and there Professor Lovell trains him in a lot of languages. I think it's Latin, Greek, and Chinese. And this is all to prepare him so he can enter this prestigious school called the Art Institute of Translation, I think, also known as Babel, that produces translators for different roles. So you can either be a translator that travels with different ambassadors or one of the most most important roles at this academy is silver making sorry i'm out of breath because i just <laughs> ran upstairs silver working silver working the art of manifesting the meaning lost in translation translation using enchanted silver bars has made the british unparalleled in power as the arcane craft serves the empire's quest for colonization silver making is the most top level job that you can get after graduating from this Royal Institute of Translation, AKA Babel. And since I did read both If We Were Villains and Babel back to back, and they're both categorized with the subgenre of dark academia, I will say both of them, yeah, took place in a very elite, prestigious university. They both had a very like focus on a close group knit of friends, so found family. Third, I will say dealing with human nature. And maybe fourth, 
the complicity in murder. There was both a murder in both. If you're looking for a book, a dark academic book, that's more on the entertaining side, I would probably recommend If We Are Villains. But if you want a deeper, more complex novel and will really strike you with grief, then I will recommend Babel. <gasps> Hello? You wanna say hi, camera? Hi, camera. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to talk about the fourth book that I read this month, which was not on my planned list of books to read this month. I actually got a notification from the library saying this was ready for pickup because I do actually have to return this book since it's a library book. It is Happiness for Beginners by Catherine Center. You know, I recognize this author's name because of a bunch of other romance novels she's written, but I didn't know it was the Catherine Center until I googled her list of books and the, her author page. I'm gonna be very honest with you, this is an instance where I truly judged a book by its cover. This is, I think, one of the cover options, but then this is the Goodreads cover and I was like, these covers are kind of ugly, like is the book gonna be any good? But because I read, because I watched the Netflix adaptation of this book, I knew what it would be about. I knew it would be kind of a like a romantic comedy. So I was like, oh, I'll give it a try because I enjoyed the movie so much. And I really, I love this book. <laughs> I truly judged this book by its cover. And I'm so glad that I forced myself to read it essentially. <laughs> so Happiness for Beginners is about a 32 year old woman named Helen Carpenter, who just went through a divorce and she isn't quite where she wants to be in life. So she decides to go on a three week hardcore wilderness survival course to change her life. And people do do this in real life. They'll go on like pilgrimages and camping excursions to really be introspective about their life. So essentially I could understand what she was doing. She wanted to go on a trip to change her life. But what she doesn't expect is that her younger brother's best friend would also be on this wilderness course with her. I think his name is Duncan, has been in love with her since he was a teenager. So you can see where that kind of goes. Maybe I really like the trope where the guy likes the girl first and he's kind of like chasing after her. Maybe that's what I really liked about the book of the trope. There is an age gap trope. He's, I think, 10 years younger than her, but it's really not that obvious in the book. I just will mention that there is also like an age gap. I love it when I read a romance book and I get like those little butterflies in my stomach and my heart like just tightens in my chest. It gave me all those all those things that I wanted out of a, a romance novel. I don't know if it was because I knew what was gonna happen, knew the buildup of their relationship. I don't know. I don't I don't know if it's because I knew what was gonna happen or because the buildup and tension of their relationship in the book was so good, but I I loved it. I I was very pleasantly surprised with this book. Okay, and we made it. We made it to the last book I read this month, which was the Love Hypothesis by Al Al by Ali Hazelwood. Um, unlike the other books I've read this month, which I would give like a rating of four out of five stars, this was a little bit of a disappointment. I gave this three out of five stars. And I'm kind of scared to say that because this actually has a very huge, huge following on the internet, which I think I did know because that's why I've seen this book so much because so many people loved it, but I really thought it was okay. Maybe it's because I, I read it after this book where the buildup of tension was so well written that this one I was like not that impressed. The spice in this book is good, like if you really like romance books with spice. I don't know what I just did there, but there is one really good spicy scene. It is a fake. I think fake dating trope, but I just, I didn't love it. I didn't love it. After finishing this book, I also 
did some research and I found out that this was based off of a Star Wars fan fiction that the author has had originally wrote about Rey and Kylo Ren, but she took out obviously all the Star Wars references and um, I just thought that was a fun fact about the origins of this book. I did read a lot of comments that it read like a fan fiction. I haven't read much fan fiction in my life, so I don't know what that means, but the amount of times the author wrote like he snorted or she bit inside the lips, I could take a shot and I would be drunk for how many times that phrase came up. The like repetition of certain phrases, it did bother me a little bit. Um, it was really funny. It was really funny. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, but definitely not my favorite like romance novel of all time. Okay, so we made it. We made it to the end of my March book review and my first book review of all time. Wow, it was a wild journey for me and probably you as a viewer to listen to me ramble and stutter and just fall over my words. Thank you for listening and getting through it. Hopefully my future reviews will be better, more improved. But yeah, thanks for listening. Bye.